Hey everybody, and welcome to a new live demo. This time it's about global acceleration. My name is Oliver Arafat. I'm working as a senior solution architect at Alibaba Cloud. So globally serving and receiving both static and dynamic content on a truly global scale is not that easy because usually your end customers are experiencing high latency and even packet loss, especially if you think about workloads being deployed in mainland China that need to be accessed from outside of China, or vice versa. If your end users are in mainland China, but most of your workloads are deployed outside of mainland China. So what you're gonna do? Alibaba Cloud offers three distinct services that are focusing on exactly this scenario, but with kind of different flavors. For example, the topic or the service that we're gonna focus on today is uh, global acceleration, which accelerates cross-geographic access to VPC resources, such as ECS or Service Load Balancer, over Alibaba Backbone Network via a public IP. So your end users are able to access your resources via a public IP with low latency and zero packet loss. The other option is Cloud Enterprise Network, which is really about cross-region and intra-region VPC peering over the Alibaba backbone network. So make, making it very easy to integrate your different workloads in different regions and to let them talk to each other. Last but not least, there's Content Delivery Network, which caches and accelerates access to both static and dynamic content via public global content delivery network. So traffic is not routed through our backbone network, but rather through our public global content delivery network. So in this live demo episode, we want to focus on global acceleration. Please keep in mind that before you can use global acceleration, this service needs to be explicitly whitelisted in your account since it's a cross-border service. In order to do this, just create an according ticket in the Alibaba Cloud portal. So how does global acceleration work? There's, there's uh, really two main aspects or concepts uh, you need to know. The one is uh, the accelerated area. In this picture, our accelerated area is in Europe, and specifically we have chosen the Frankfurt region. So this really is the area or the, the, the area where you want to enable your end users a faster access to your backend services that are deployed in another region. In this case, it's in mainland China, and this is what we call the service area. So the service area really contains these resources that you like to talk to uh, from the accelerated area. As you can see, one global acceleration instance only supports one accelerated area. However, you can bind multiple service areas to one global acceleration instance in case it's uh, provisioned in shared bandwidth mode. And we're gonna look at that in uh, just a couple of seconds. So there are two modes you can create a global acceleration instance. You can create it in a dedicated or a shared bandwidth mode. Let's firstly look at the dedicated bandwidth mode. Dedicated bandwidth means that there's only one public IP associated to the global acceleration instance, and all the traffic can make use of the entire bandwidth package that has been assigned to this instance. In this case, it's 10 Mbits per second. Then there's share, share bandwidth mode, and as you can see in the share bandwidth mode, you can assign up to 50 elastic IPs to one global acceleration instance. All of these 50 IPs need to be in the accelerated area, of course, which is Europe in this example. Now, the great thing is that you can now assign multiple backend services from the service area, which is in this case, mainland China. And our service area of mainland China consists currently of seven regions. So you can um, connect your workloads in seven different regions in China 
and connect them to one public IP address, which is uh, accessible with low latency and almost zero packet loss from Europe. So let's take a look at a live demo to give you a more concrete idea how this service is working. So what are we going to build today? It's uh, what you're seeing here. We're going to create a uh, dedicated bandwidth instance uh, that has one public IP uh, exposed to our European users. And it talks to a backend service, which is deployed in the Hangzhou region in mainland China. And on this ECS instance that we're going to connect, uh, we will run a WordPress installation. And as you can see, this WordPress installation is then accessible from two public endpoints. One is uh, the public IP associated to the global acceleration instance, and the other one, the 89.120.20.100, is the public IP that's directly associated to the ECS instance in Hangzhou. Okay, so let's switch over to our portal and let's go to the global acceleration UI, which you're going to find here. So it takes a couple of seconds and then we should finally see the console. So here it comes. Let's switch over to Germany. So as you can see, I have already created a global acceleration instance here which is a dedicated bandwidth instance. I could also create a shared bandwidth instance, but let's stick with this one. So just to quickly show how it works is, let's click on create instance, and it will redirect you to our buy page, where you can choose between the two bandwidth types, dedicated and shared, where you can choose the accelerated area. In our case, this is Europe and also the region. In this case, we take Germany, but you could uh, also use London for sure. And then there's the service area, which is uh, right now mainland China, North America, and Asia Pacific. And below here, as you can see, you can also choose the bandwidth, like 20 Mbit or 10 Mbit. As you can see, the price for one month is 2,200 US dollars for a connection between Europe and mainland China. Okay, let's go back here. And what we're gonna do now, we're gonna bind an instance which is now located in Hangzhou. So first of all, um, we need to select the region that we want to connect to. In this case, it's Hangzhou. Then we need to choose the instance type. As you can see, I can choose between ECS instance and an SLB instance, so a service load balancer which could distribute traffic to a lot more several ECS instances. In this case, we're going to just use an ECS instance here. And then we're going to select the specific instance we want to connect to. In this case, it's this instance here. Then I click OK. And that's it. Now it will take a couple of seconds until the binding is completed. As you can already see here in the back end, service instance field or column, it has already assigned an internal IP that Global Acceleration will use to send the traffic to. Now the interesting thing is the following. If we take a look at the ECS console of the ECS instance, which is located in China, you see that the private IP here is different. So we need to create a sub interface or a sub network interface uh, with the IP global acceleration is using so that the traffic is uh, forwarded um, to, to the instance and can be received there. This is being done that the different traffics are not interfering with traffic that is uh, processed within the VPC or is coming from a NAT gateway or is sent out to a NAT gateway. So it's just to make sure that we have two separate network interfaces that don't interfere with each other. So let's connect to um, the instance. In order to do this, I'm going to connect via SSH. And I enter my password, hopefully.
And now I need to create the sub interface or the sub network interface, which is quite easy. Can be done with if config eth zero one. And now we're gonna we're just gonna take this internal IP address that has been assigned by global acceleration and put it here. Now that's it. So if we're now looking at the network interface, we're going to see our ETH zero with the internal IP, and we're going to see the sub interface uh, with the IP address assigned, which is used by global acceleration. So let's try it out. First, let's use the public IP address here of global acceleration and try to access our WordPress instance. Installation, as you can see, just works. It uh, loaded up very, very fast. Let's do the same thing with the global IP address, which is located in China. Also goes pretty fast, but I'm, maybe you, you, you could see that it took a little longer. So now let's uh, take a closer look on latency and packet loss. So first of all, we're going to measure the uh, latency and packet loss against the public endpoint or against the public IP, which is located in Hangzhou. So let's do a simple ping against this public IP. And as you can see, the latency is around 230 milliseconds, roundabout. Also, if we're going to do a MTR, just to take a look at the number of hops and uh, the packet loss, we're going to see around 16 hops and also here a huge number of packet loss actually, which is happening. This makes it really not a good experience for the end users if you have these high packet losses, which is usually the reason why you know it's uh, so difficult to provide a good user experience for end users in China or for end users in Europe that need to access resources in mainland China. Now let's compare this to um, the public IP of the global acceleration instance. So first of all, let's copy this here. And let's do a first ping test. And as you can see, the ping is actually half of the latency that we were observing when we were doing the ping test against the public IP in China. So this is already a huge improvement. Now let's do the same thing um, and take a look at the number of hops and also the packet loss. And as you can see, we're now at around nine hops, which is way lower than the 16 hops we had previously. And also, if you're looking at the packet loss rate, it's zero now. So this now will really guarantee a very good user experience for your end users that need to access resources in China or also the other way around. All right, so, so much for global acceleration and a short live demo. I hope you enjoyed this live demo. If you have any technical questions or inquiries, uh, please don't hesitate to contact me at o.arafat at alibaba-inc.com. Or if you have business or sales inquiries, uh, please contact my colleague, uh, Christoph. He is reachable at christoph.kung at alibaba-inc.com. Thank you so much for listening. And have a great day. Bye.